Selector groups are CSS rules containing two or more comma-separated selectors that share the same properties and values. So we give the same styles to several types of selectors all at once. Doing this minimizes our CSS and makes it more maintainable because we're not unnecessarily repeating lines of code. Let's find out how. So here we have an HTML document containing three divs, each with a different class. So here we have square, circle, and ellipse. Over in our style.css file, I've already created a CSS rule for each selector, where I've defined a few styles to set the shape of each element. Again, don't worry if you're not familiar with many of these properties and values just yet, because we'll be covering them throughout this deep dive. For this video, you'll simply need to understand how grouping selectors can help us keep our CSS to a minimum and make things more maintainable for us. In the browser, we can see each shape that was defined in the style sheet. So here we have the square, the circle, and the ellipse. In our CSS file, notice how each of these rules have certain CSS properties in common. They share certain styles in order to define their shapes. So for example, all three rules have the same exact value for display, width, margin, and background color. The circle and ellipse selectors also share the same border radius values. So we're repeating a lot of CSS in these three rules. There's a common practice in CSS or in web development in general called DRY, D-R-Y, which stands for don't repeat yourself. And the main idea is to avoid repeating the same bits of code. So if we have code that is repeated multiple times throughout the style sheet, like we have in our three selectors here, it's a good idea to refactor the CSS so that each property and value pair is only defined one time. I'll show you what I mean. So the idea with dry is to group repeated CSS properties together. So we know that all three rules share the same values for display, width, margin, and background color. So what we'll do is add the circle and ellipse class selectors to this first rule. Even though the ellipse rule doesn't share the same height property, as we can see here, it has a height of 120 pixels, we'll still add it to this top rule because we'll modify the height in the ellipse rule. So it's fine. So up here, we'll go ahead and add a comma followed by circle, then another comma, and we'll type ellipse. It's important that we add the comma between every selector we're grouping, except for the very last one. Otherwise, the entire rule will be ignored by the browser. So now we can go ahead and remove those repeated properties from the circle and ellipse selectors because they're already defined in the top rule. So next, we can group circle and ellipse into a selector since they both share the same border radius value, which simply sets the rounded corners and circular shape. So I'll go ahead and add a comma after circle, then type ellipse. So now we can go ahead and remove the border radius decoration from the ellipse rule and leave the modified height of 120 pixels. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save the style sheet and I'll bring up the Chrome browser. When I refresh it, we can see that nothing has changed. Everything looks exactly the same, except that our CSS is now much cleaner or drier. We can actually take things a step further and turn these CSS rules into modules or components that can be reused anywhere in our HTML. 
I'll show you what I mean by that. So instead of defining three separate selectors for this top rule, we can make this one CSS class selector. We'll need to give it a new class name, and since class names should always be meaningful and clearly communicate what they do, I'll go ahead and name this one base because it defines the base styles for our shapes. Next, we can do the same thing for the second selector group. This time, we'll name it radius since it defines the border radius of the shape. We can keep the ellipse selector since it's defining the elliptical shape with its smaller height value. So I'll save the CSS file and we'll go over to our index.html file. So we know that classes are reusable and that an element can have more than one class. So what we'll need to do next is replace these classes with the new selectors we just created. We'll sort of plug those little modules in wherever necessary. So first, we'll replace each class with base. So I'll just go ahead and copy and paste these down here. So I'll save this. And in the browser, when we refresh it, we get three squares for all three because a square is the base shape or styles. So back in our CSS, I'll go ahead and plug in the radius class for our circle element in order to add the border radius. So below this, in our elliptical element, we'll also need to add the radius class since it does need the border radius value. Then we'll need to add the ellipse class to modify its height. So I'll go ahead and save the HTML file. When we review it in the browser, we can see how everything looks and works exactly the same. But now our CSS is much more efficient and maintainable compared to the CSS we started with. So as we can see here in our original CSS file, we've significantly reduced the lines of CSS code in our style sheets.